Hey, this is part two of the short NVIDIA Flex Solar series. And in case you missed the first one, the, the link is down below. Here I have the network that we've built in the first part. And for now, I'm just gonna get rid of the diffuse particles because I wanna focus on something else. First of all, we're gonna use tops instead of sops for our instancing. So add a sop to chop and then append it with a chop to top operator. Make sure that you've selected the RGB pixels, choose fit to square and 32 bit flow pixel format. Delete this null. We can use this stop as a translate operator and set channels to R, G, and B. If you reset it now, it will work just fine. So what I wanted to show you is that here in the flex tab of the actor comp, we actually have these two fields called position feedback top and velocity feedback top. And you can use them to override your particle's behavior. The simplest thing you can do is to add a noise sub. We need to make sure that it has the same resolution that our chop to top has and to do so, we can use a simple expression for width and height. Now, we can plug this thing into null, disable monochrome, and yeah, just grab that null and drop it into the velocity feedback top field. As you can see, nothing is happening, and that's because velocity feedback top must be 32-bit float RGB. Once you fix it, everything starts moving. Now, the whole particle system is affected only by that noise top. And to get some of the usual flex behavior back, you can add a flex top, drag the actor comp into it, and select velocity from the drop down. Then connect both the flex top and the noise into a cross top and interpolate between these values as you like. The only drawback here is that our particles get their velocity based on their pixel position in a buffer, not by the particle's position in space. To fix that, we won't even gonna use any GLSL. All we need to do is to duplicate that flex top, select the position option from the dropdown, and then connect it into the second input of the noise top, because the second input of the noise allows us to give it new coordinates. And now you have it, a 3D flow field that you can control. You can change the period, change the offset, amplitude, harmonics, and so on. Another thing that we can do is utilize that position feedback top. Add a select top and drag our chop to top onto it. Connect the select top and the flex position top into a mate. Let's add a noise right here and an null top in the end. Now use that null as a position feedback top. Feels like nothing has changed, but if you change the mate channel to red from alpha and adjust the noise top, you're going to see that some of your particles stay still while others are affected by their velocity. You can animate the noise and use it to reset particles position once in a while. By the way, you can still play with most of the flex solver parameters such as particle radius, cohesion and so on. And that's kinda cool. Yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial and now feel excited to play with flex fluids. That's it for the second part of the flex solver series. I'm probably gonna make part three with some more advanced stuff using GLSL and whatnot. And that will be available for my patrons on Patreon. As usual, if you like this tutorial, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing if you're new around here and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.